Welcome to our channel, the portal to a world where every frame tells a story, and every review opens a door to cinematic wonders. Get ready to immerse yourself in the captivating universe of films, where a passionate team of cinephiles will guide you through a myriad of emotions, from laughter to tears, as we uncover the magic that makes movies unforgettable. Today, we're going to watch a review of the science fiction action thriller movie Predestination, which was written and directed by Michael and Peter Spirig in 2014. A gunfight breaks out in March 1975 as an agent attempts to put an end to a bombing in a New York City public building. Because the bomb is not completely contained in time, the agent sustains severe burns. He uses his time travel device to retreat to his employer's facility in 1992 with the assistance of an unseen person. The agent considers his mission a failure because the fizzle bomber, the unidentified serial bombing fugitive he confronted, remains uncaptured and will carry out his bombing on another day, ultimately killing over 10,000 people. The agent recovers from his injuries, but facial reconstruction surgery and vocal cord damage have altered his face and voice. His superiors force his imminent retirement due to the dangers of the extensive time travel undertaken over the course of his career. His doctor diagnoses him with symptoms of psychosis and depression but does not disclose this. The agent is sent on his final mission. Working undercover in 1970 New York City as a bartender, he converses with a customer who writes true confession articles under the pen name, The Unmarried Mother. The reticent customer begins telling his own life story after much prompting, born female, the customer grew up as Jane in a Cleveland orphanage. Superior in intellect and physical strength but plain. In appearance, Jane suffered as an unloved outcast and was never adopted. These qualities, however, led a man named Robertson to recruit her for Space Corp, a space flight organization seeking young women as RR companions for male astronauts. During Jane's aptitude testing, a physical examination revealed an undiscovered, disqualifying medical condition. Keeping this a secret, Robertson rejected Jane under a pretense while promising to re-enlist her. In 1963, Jane fell in love with a man. By a chance encounter, briefly finding happiness before the man deserted her one day. Robertson finally revealed to Jane that Space Corp was a front to recruit elite operatives with no family ties for a secret government agency, but Jane became disqualified again due to being pregnant by her lover. While performing a caesarean section, doctors discovered Jane was intersex. As a result of a forced hysterectomy due to birth complications, Jane underwent gender reassignment through a series of extensive surgeries. Amidst all this, her baby was abducted by an unidentified man. Resenting her lover for ruining her life, Jane adopted the name John and eventually relocated to New York City. The agent offers John the chance to take revenge on his lover Scott Free, in return for John taking over the agent's job. The agent time travels with John to Cleveland in 1963, admitting that he works for Robertson's secret agency, the Temporal Bureau, which uses time travel to prevent crimes. Following instructions for finding Jane in the past, John unwittingly falls in love with his younger self and realizes that the agent set him up to become Jane's lover. Despite knowing that their love is doomed, John cannot bring himself to break off their relationship, Deviating from his mission, the agent illegally time travels to March 1975 to pursue the Fizzle Bomber once more. The Fizzle Bomber beats him in combat, leaving him to witness, and help, his earlier burned self. The agent expects to be punished by execution, but Robertson excuses him, dismissing the Bureau's protocols, continuing his mission, the agent brings Jane's baby, born from her self-fertilization by John back in time to the Cleveland Orphanage in 1945. Thus, Jane, John, and their baby are the same person, a predestination paradox. The agent returns to 1963 and convinces John to leave Jane at the preordained time, inducting John into the Temporal Bureau in 1985 and completing his mission. Robertson extols the importance of John's future role at the Bureau as a unique operative with no ties to the past or future. The agent still regrets his failure to stop the Fizzle Bomber, but Robertson credits the Fizzle Bomber for motivating the Bureau's growth and success. The agent chooses to retire to New York City in 1975 shortly before the March attack, arriving, he decommissions his time travel device as planned, but the device remains operational. He also finds that Robertson gave him 
an exact location and time where the Fizzle Bomber will be found. There, he discovers that the Fizzle Bomber is his future self, who claims that his bombings averted greater death tolls in alternate futures. The Bomber also claims that Robertson set up this path for him. Vowing that he will not become the Bomber, the agent guns down his older self, John's surgical scars are shown on the agent's body, confirming that Jane, John, the agent, and the Fizzle Bomber are all the same person. Robertson knowingly orchestrated this agent's existence, responsible for both his own conception and death. On a tape recording left for John, the agent contemplates whether the future can be changed. It's the end. Thanks for watching the full video. Hope you love this video. Please press the like button and give your comments about this video and we'll upload videos regularly so don't forget to subscribe our channel, give your suggestion about next topic in comments section, meet you in next video, bye bye.